Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Steve Hayes' Tired Old Queen at the Movies. If you're new here and you like the content, make sure to subscribe. Also hit that bell notification so you know every time a new video comes out. We've got some great merchandise below, including Steve Hayes' t-shirt, Steve Hayes' mug on a mug. Now let's go see Steve. Oh, Johnny, come on. Oh, Happy New Year, Johnny! And I thought we'd start off the year with Katherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy in their first comedy together, 1941's Woman of the Year, with a script by Ringlarder Jr. and Michael Kanan and directed by the incomparable George Stevens. After Philadelphia's story, Katherine Hepburn sort of had her way at MGM. She could do whatever she wanted to. Always have. I uh, like knowing more about what goes on than most people. And Ring Lardner and Michael Kanan had written this terrific screenplay, and Hepburn bought it and said, I'm going to pitch this to L.B. Mayer, and I'm not going to tell him who wrote it. So L.B. read it and thought, oh, this is great, Kate, because she knew that L.B. would try to get it for as low money as possible, and she liked these two guys. They had Taylor made it for her, and she wanted them to get top dollar. So she refused to tell Mayer who wrote it until after he'd already purchased it. And then she said, oh, it's two unknowns. Well, it worked out great because not only did they get top dollar, they won the Academy Award for the best screenplay of the year. She wanted to work with Spencer Tracy. She had wanted to for a long time. Joseph L. Mankiewicz was producing and he decided, okay, well, he'll introduce her. So they met on the lot and the first thing that Katherine Hepburn said to Spencer Tracy was, I ran a toll for you a lot, Mr. Tracy. And Mankiewicz said, don't worry, Kate, he'll cut you down to size. And that was their initial meeting with each other. <laughs> You're cute. Oh. So we can look forward with greater confidence to the grip. Oh. This movie, essentially, the plot is they work at the same newspaper. He's a sports writer. She's an international columnist. She has her finger on everything that's happening, and she's very famous, and he is the most famous sports writer going along. I assume that his purpose in this is simply to demonstrate that at one time or another, he was subjected to a grammar school course in history. <laughs> They meet, there's an initial attraction immediately, and they start going out. And it's the combination of those two worlds, you know, that you know, opposites attract, that leads them to it. There's almost an immediate rapport between Spencer Tracy and Katherine Hepburn. They just got along like a house on fire. Well, uh, yes, yes, I guess it is, but I... Uh... Then aren't you going in the wrong direction? Maybe I am. Tracy at the time was separated from his wife, and um, but very unwilling to get a divorce. He had a lot of guilt about his son, was John was born deaf, and his, his wife had set up the John Tracy Clinic, so he didn't want any scandal, but it was pretty obvious that they had started having an affair. Thought you might want to kiss me goodbye. Catherine Hepburn's character in this wants to work him into her world, but she doesn't have time for him. He wants a wife. This was the whole juxt of all of the Tracy Hepburn vehicles, is him putting his thumb down and forcing her to be under him, being a wife. Catherine Hepburn has never been more Catherine Hepburn than she is in this movie. She is very, very good. But he brought a sexuality out in her that had never happened before. The first time he sees her, she's fixing her stocking, so you're looking at her legs. That never happened in a, in a Catherine Hepburn movie before. He didn't like to rehearse. She loved to rehearse constantly. He did most of his best work on the first take, so she had to adjust that. She also knew he had a drinking problem. He had a bad alcohol problem his whole life. So she kept him in hot tea as much as possible and got him to paint and tried anything possible to keep him sober throughout. She was his caretaker for the rest of his life off and on and um, that was just the nature of their relationship. But in terms of screen acting and chemistry, they had it. They are so compulsively watchable. Frightening idea of getting tied down. Guess there's one thing I didn't figure out. What? You, Sam. Her whole thing is confrontation. Spencer Tracy's whole thing is reaction. He's a reaction actor. He listens better than anybody. She would often talk about that, that he had that quality of, of listening. And he's very much in the moment. Shoot. Uh, uh, 
No, no, it's uh, nothing in particular. And she's fluttering all around. Yeah, yeah, this is lovely. lovely, lovely. She speaks like six or seven languages in this movie and does it, dubs them perfectly. <laughs> She speaks Russian, speaks German, she speaks Greek, she speaks French. She is an international gal. And she's got this gorgeous wardrobe by Adrian. She looks phenomenal in this movie. He takes her to a baseball game and she can't figure out who's playing who and what's going on. And she takes him to this formal affair with all of these diplomats and he can't talk a foreign language and they're all trying to talk to him and he doesn't know what they're saying. And so there's all, it kind of balances out. You probably don't speak Slovenian either. No, just a little broken English. <laughs> This movie made a lot, a lot of money, and Katherine Hepburn was nominated for an Academy Award. She chose George Stevens to direct this. She would ordinarily have picked George Cukor, who just directed her in Philadelphia Story and was her good friend, but she wanted Spencer to have a big man around to be comfortable. And Stevens was really, really good in comedy. <laughs> Also in this movie is Dan Tobin. He plays Katharine Hepburn's male secretary. Now, Dan Tobin had played the part in Philadelphia Story of Tracy Lord's brother on Broadway, which was a part they cut out, and he's only referred to in the movie. But Hepburn liked him, and she brought him in, and he did this movie. And afterwards, he played sort of a feat, uh, prissy characters after that. And this one, he plays Gerald. It'll just be a moment. This is Gerald Howe, Miss Harding's secretary speaking. Yeah, he's really good at these parts. He's very efficient. Pardon me, Mr. Craig. Miss Harding says if you're making eggs, she'd like some. All right. Kind of very much in the way until Tracy takes care of business, which was, again, the old way of, you know, if he's a queen, he can't be, he, he can't be masculine, so we have to get him out of the way. She said I should tell you if I was hungry, too. I am. I wish I could say that this movie pushes against the whole idea of male dominance, but it doesn't. They, when they did a screening of it, they decided that they needed to tack on an ending to this movie, and Katherine Hepburn hated it. But as a comedy, they, it worked. Something I've got to get off my chest. I'm too heavy. No. And what? Even so, with all that, and that Spencer Tracy thing of, you know, keeping her in her place, which... I hate. I love this movie because it's smart. It's witty. And one of the things that I miss about movies is the wit. It has great wit. The hat. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's a delicious comedy, um, despite some of its non-contemporary feel about it. And I think you're going to love Spencer Tracy, Katherine Hepburn, Faye Bainter, Dan Tobin, and George Stevens. Woman of the Year. Ah, how lovely. Let's all go to the line. Happy New Year, Tommy, 2021! Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said Happy New Year, Tommy. Oh, hi! <laughs> <laughs> and a Happy New Year to you, too. A Happy New Year, too. Happy New Year! Happy New Year. <laughs>